So markets didn't hit new all-time highs as Jerome Powell basically said, maybe not that many rate cuts. As he signified various different things in his latest speech, as we can see, Jerome Powell says, we need to hurry, no, no need to hurry rate cuts, right? So the market interpret this basically as we're not gonna get as many rate cuts. What does this necessarily mean for the market? Does this mean that we're gonna start a crash? Does it mean a Black Friday sale is coming? Notice how I said Black Friday sale, right? Everyone that's looking in the market is basically saying, oh no, the market fell today and it's a horrible thing because we didn't make new all-time highs, right? I closed a lot of my bullish positions that I started off in the beginning of the week that I showed you guys in the previous video. That does not necessarily mean I'm completely bearish on the market, right? We have talked about bearish things on this channel several times. We've talked about the yield curve. We've talked about futures basically being bearish. We've talked about a lot of things, right? The yield curve still stably staying in this uninverted territory. It is a cause for concern. Is alarm bells going off? No, not yet. And if you guys saw the weekend deep dive, you guys would know exactly what levels we would need to pay attention to because S&P basically came down to exactly this level on a Thursday closing basis. So is this bad? No, not really. It's not really that bad. Should you be buying? Um, maybe, maybe not. Depends on if you want a dollar cost average, if you what your time frame is for retirement, right? A lot of people that are older should not necessarily be dollar cost averaging because they don't have time for the risk. But today we're going to basically answer what we should be looking in for the Friday close. That is the main sum and substance of what we are going to try answering today. Simply put, are we above 585? And that's a long way to go. That would basically be the equivalent of three days of work. That'd be a 1.25% haircut. Do we have any catalysts that can cause that significant of a move today? Well, let's take a look, right? So the economic calendar, we got PPI on Thursday, came in worse than expected. They also revised the previous higher from 1.8 to 1.9 for regular PPI and subsequently 2.8 to 2.9. So they revised everything about 0.1 and came in 0.1 hotter than expected. Okay, that's not great, but it's also not terrible considering that inflation is not as much in the forefront of the Fed's mind as it is jobs. So jobs are the main thing that they're going to be looking at, but jobs came in okay. So it's this balancing of risk, as we've heard Jerome Powell say. We also got a bunch of sell signals in the sense of closed position time in the market, and we'll be showing that in just a moment. But fear and greed basically sitting at 60. So this is not necessarily that we are in true basic fearful territory, right? We're not selling off like crazy. We're just going down. People are taking profit. Uh, others are not necessarily stepping up to the plate to take those positions. And we can look at various different things, right? Is there any threats for Friday, like we mentioned? Well, Friday, we just got retail sales. Okay, that is important. But is it gonna be so magnificently important that people are gonna go bonkers over like a CPI day or a jobs day? No, I would argue not really. The market's kind of set in its ways. We do have Atlanta Fed GDP now. That could move the markets a little bit considering that we're, we wanna see if the economy is slowing. If no real bad news comes and it's a Friday, traditionally Fridays have been bullish as you're heading into this bullish time of the markets of basically continued runs in the market. So. If we jump back to the chart, right, let's analyze this real quick of what happened to the market, right? Okay, so subsequently three days, lower lows, lower lows, and lower lows. Okay, that is bearish, but it is not completely fall off the cliff bearish, right? We, As we mentioned before, the fear and greed index is still in bullish territory. The reverse repo has not come down to a level that is very concerning at this point in time. We'll keep you guys updated. The yield curve is not doing anything crazy. The expectations for rate cuts have been have been anchored, and therefore we can clearly see that 86% believe at least a 25 basis point cut. The problem is with the projection of the Federal Reserve. We're gonna get this in December in 18, approximately one month from today. You guys will know what the Federal Reserve is thinking for the subsequent next six months of the year. So again, with Powell signaling there's no need to hurry, he's not necessarily saying that there's no rate cuts, it just we may wait, let's say we have four rate cuts. We may front run them to the back of the end of the year. We may wait a little bit. We may see the totality of the data as it said. But if we look back at the markets right now, okay, so we're coming for an area where it's basically threatening the first gap fill. Okay, so we have a gap fill located on the chart right here between 593 and approximately 590. So that's a $3 gap fill on the SPY. 
It's not crazy, it's like half a percent. So that would be healthy for the markets on top of bouncing off of the nine day moving average, still maintaining above a close above 592.14 would be significant in the sense of continuation of bullishness going sideways or slightly down would form more of a flag pattern right right here to have the continuation of bullish but if subsequently we break down past the 585 level because some catastrophe happens today then we have to reassess right then we have to reassess okay is that 50 in threat what is the nine day moving average are we not going to rotate above 585 that's also the previous all-time high right here so that would be very bearish okay so that would be recipe number step three for the markets to put in a bearish thesis right now you just kind of have consolidation and you can see it in various different markets we can jump to bitcoin to see what it's doing right just because bitcoin's not hitting 100k right now doesn't necessarily mean it's bearish it's taking a breather the same way that the s p is setting up a flag the bitcoin is setting up a flag right here so Bitcoin going sideways or slightly down would not necessarily indicate any bearishness in Bitcoin. Again, 100K is that psychological price target. And if you really set this up to be a bull flag, a traditional bull flag, then we can pretty much project this to about 113K. I'm going to say 100 to be conservative just because that is an area of psychological, right? 100K is a three digit um, number. It plays with the human psyche. So again, we have to be cautious for concern. Now, let's get into the why I'm a little concerned in the markets, right? So first of all, the Russell is now filling the gap. Russell filling the gap is a preemptive notice of the S&P and the NASDAQ possibly filling the gap. If S&P and NASDAQ both fill the gap and break the levels that we gave out on the weekend deep dive, link in the description below if you guys want to check that one out. So again, the Russell is giving you early warning signs. What else is giving you an early warning sign? RSP. RSP breaking below the nine day or right at the nine day moving average because it's the equal weighting of S&P kind of gives you early warning signals on top of VIX basically just hey, saying, hey, I'm not going down anymore. This is a little cause for concern. This is why I limited the amount of exposure on top of we're going to NVIDIA earnings next week. There's going to be a lot of volatility. Again, NVIDIA could kick off another bull run. So what would you guys want? Do you want to pay the premiums right now or just wait a couple days? Maybe the market sells off a little bit and NVIDIA reinvigorates the market and bull party happens again. Again, looking at the S&P on the indicator level, the one concern I have, like I said, I was gonna manage this portfolio accordingly and gave you guys this out. Once the signal on the smart money flow shows up, like it was showing in the beginning of the day, I close the position. Now I'm learning that like, for example, Meta was one of those that I basically saw this signal and didn't necessarily play it the best, but I played it that I opened another contract for downside potential, profit off of him on the initial drop, but really didn't do much with it. So I'm gonna see how that trade played out. I took a basically break even between Microsoft and Meta trade. So those two counteracted one another. So I will keep you guys updated of the strategy that I'm coming up with to maximize returns on Theta. Right now, because the market's not really wanting to decide what it's doing, I'm putting that on hold until we get a better entry signal, right? I did the entries on these positions and not such a great point. If I was holding meta around, let's say this 157 number, or really that, yeah, 160 number correction, then I'd be really more comfortable kind of holding through this risk, especially with these signals. But as of now, I'm not necessarily in the most comfortable position with that. I did sell my Apple shares that I was holding. I hold I held 100 uh, Apple shares because Apple's getting rejected at this 229 point, right? It was pushing up 228 and a half, 229, kind of hit its wall. And now the question is with the market selling off, can Apple be the one to pull the rest of the market? Or is it going to be the one that gets dragged down, right? Apple not really showing a huge amount of strength. We still have this area of consolidation. So I was like, okay, wait, you can always reposition. But again, I was looking at various other things. If we jump to Microsoft, we can see similar strong movement. I gave this out on the Discord. Uh, Microsoft could be an interesting buying point. And also if we jump to this chart right here, we can see that Microsoft actually is breaking above the 50 and the 200 day moving average in this range that we're about to break. So again, this could be a strong price movement for Microsoft, which could then lead to rotation in the broader market. I did say Amazon and Google weren't ones I was necessarily looking at. As we saw, Amazon sold off along with Google selling off as well. So maybe these oh, higher bent stocks are gonna cool off. Maybe Microsoft and Apple would be that discount opportunity to run. I'll keep you guys updated of that with this transaction on here. 
I want to see what the rest of the market does, but my main concern is the S&P and the NASDAQ both showing this sell signal right here. RSI is looking like it wants to peel back over and we have fair value gaps down below and plenty of them that are still in play. We got the gap at 508, we got the gap at 500, we got the gap at 493 on the NASDAQ. That's going to be areas of concern that I'm like, hmm, do I necessarily want to hold through this risk? Personally, no. Will I buy the green dot when it shows up? Yes, because that is how I'm structuring the portfolio. Right now, when I'm recording this video, futures aren't doing the hottest right now. So therefore, I don't necessarily want to hold through this risk through the day. That is why I close my positions. And if you guys want on the Discord, I gave all that out. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Others like Tesla, right? Tesla is basically just having a crappy day, right? As we see pushing back down lower, Nvidia was the one that was having a bull signal and now has a bear signal. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna close all these positions and wait to re-enter because the market is, I believe, needing to basically stagnate, pull back on some of that fervency, calm back down, which going sideways to down would be a bullish thing. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to look bullish in the sense of buying opportunities if we get that dip. The risks are awarded then skewed to the upside, but right now it's skewed to the downside. So make sure you guys are positioned accordingly to that. Make sure you guys are also joined the Discord because we're going to be going over NVIDIA earnings next week. It's going to be a fantastic time. So make sure you guys check that out. I will have the Weekend Deep Dive linked over here if you missed the last one. And I hope to see you in the Weekend Deep Dive on Sunday afternoon. Thank you all so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.